of the tip for when you're trying to work on something. The big stick, the driver. Now, I actually saw a video yesterday that said the, the key to hitting your driver, the secret to the driver, is to remove the driver from your bag. I call BS on that. Let me tell you why. Because the driver can be the most deadliest weapon in your bag if you just apply a few core fundamental principles. Now, if you got a golf method, a golf system, that works for every club in the bag other than your driver, then you have an issue, okay? That's just real talk, real business. If your instruction doesn't allow a player to hit every club in his bag, then we have an issue with your instruction. So I'm gonna hit the driver, and like I said, I'm working on making sure my shoulder turn is full, so with the big stick, you get a little bit quicker. If you can do it with the big stick, you can do it with any other club in the world. And like Jack Nicholas said, I don't care if it got a two on the bottom, a five on the bottom, a seven on the bottom, or a nine on the bottom. It's the swing that's gonna create it. You gotta have confidence in yourself, folks, all right? I just hit the prettiest little power fade out there. Let's go check it out. Okay, so again, you'll never hear me telling any student to take um, the driver out the bag. Now, I will advise that student to learn how to use some critical data in course management and know how to pick the club that is the best club for him to play or her to play. Okay, I will do that. For me personally, the three wood was the hardest club in my bag to master. The driver was simple for me, but the three wood, like I tell people, I say I don't find three woods, three woods find me. That's why I'm still playing that old school 975F Titleist because that club found me 15 years ago and it's still in my bag and I've tried all new ones and none of them can compare. All righty, so look at this. Beautiful shot right down here, power fade down the line. It's because I got confidence in my ability. Keep the driver in your bag, folks. Just work on your core fundamental principles and get better. Yep. Keep the driver in the bag. Just work on your core fundamental principles and improve your swing. I hit a good shot, but I lost it into the sky. But I think I'm somewhere up there on the green. I had like 176, and um, I'm playing my Ben Hogan clubs. And remember, I said know your equipment. So what I did, I just took a nice little smooth three I'm um, three quarter swing, five iron, and it just jumped off the face. I mean, absolutely jumped off the face. I love these clubs, these apexes. There it go sitting up there pin high so it was a great club selection i knew i could get a six iron there but with the wind we have a lot of wind today and i said let me take this um five iron and just put a nice smooth swing on it keep it below the wind so i took it through that wind that's that critical data so i took it below the wind and i kept it on a certain trajectory Let me get my putter out of here. I got one of those bags where it puts every club right where it's supposed to go. I'm, I'm, I'm demoing one of these bags for um, a friend of mine's. And it has its good points, but it also has some bad points too, you know. So I'm not sold on it yet. So here's the ball. Pink balls because my mom 
lost her battle with um, cancer, her four-year battle. So you'll see me playing the pink balls often now. Okay. Let's see if we can get out of here with a nice little birdie. Okay, folks, that's a par on a um, 404-yard, I think, 404, 406-yard hole. But you see what I'm trying to say. When you're working on something, take it to the golf course. That's the whole key, taking it to the golf course. Because if you can't use it on the golf course, why are you working on it on the practice tee? That's my simple philosophy, okay? And, folks, do not remove the driver from your bag. Just improve your core fundamental principles, okay? That's how simple it is. If you got a method or an instructor or a theory, it should work for every club in your bag. When it stopped working for one club, it's only a matter of time before it stopped working for another club. Take care, folks. Keep grinding. Okay, folks, they have this hole all the way up, playing 278 yards today, little par four. Um, a good hole where you normally could try to drive it, but we've had so much rain that the rough is up to six to eight inches. So if you're anywhere off the green, you're going to pay a hell of a penalty. So I'm going to take my 975 F3 wood and have more of a controlled shot and just put it somewhere on the short grass. That's that critical data. You can even take a 5 wood off this hole, a hybrid, an iron off this hole, and still have a respectable club into the green. I wasn't trying to get full distance with the club. I wasn't trying to smoke one out there. My whole goal was just to put a nice club on the short grass that's going to give me a club that I can control um, back into the green because the rough is brutal today. And when I say brutal, I mean brutal. I mean absolutely brutal. I'm sitting right here in the middle of the fairway with maybe 70 yards into the green. You just can't beat that. You know, a nice little smooth swing. I didn't try to get full distance. My whole goal was all about control. Get all of that ball. I'm kind of upset that you know this was in my chops. Nice strike and everything. The ground is so soft. I think that took some of the um the speed away. Yeah, the ground is so soft. I think the ground gave up, gave out underneath me because I just thought I was gonna be all over it. You ever heard you ever heard that game? You seen the kids play that game where when the ball is over the pin and it's just like doom 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 doom. Well, that's how my heart was beating. I mean, right on line with it, but the ground just gave out. So what do you do on a little short hole? Do you are you gonna stress yourself? No. You gonna come up here, put a nice little shot on it, and try to get out of here.
Just like that, baby. So a hole that could have been a birdie hole turned to an easy par hole because I chipped it up there really nice and close. I mean, I don't even have to put this, but I put everything. I put everything because when people start giving you gimmies and then you play them in match play, you stuck with making that little putt. Oh, Jack Nicholas used to do it. He would give you putts for the whole 13, 14 holes, and then he would make you put them out. Now, how do you feel if you ain't putted a ball that meant something for the whole round, then all of a sudden you need, you need to make these putts? See, that's a little tap in, but it's a nice little par. I mean, it could have been a birdie hole. Should have been a birdie hole, but take what you get and get out of here. Okay, so that's a par. You see me scramble for that par. All because the ground was a little bit soft. I should have put that ball back in my stance and trapped it a little bit more, but I made a good recovery with a nice pitch shot within tap in range and get out of here with a par. It's not gonna hurt me. I'm actually gonna forget about it. As soon as I put this flag in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the hole, this hole is over. I'm on to the next hole. Take care folks, keep grinding. Okay, Phil, this is for you. Phil doesn't feel comfortable playing from a closed shoulders position, which is okay. Remember, the swing is 100% customizable. Think about Lee Trevino. Lee Trevino played from an open position and plays some of the greatest golf we've ever seen in our life. The reason he did because his swing path was correct. So if you want to play from a neutral position or even an open position, Make sure you drill down and make sure you get in contact with me so we can get your swing path better, okay? Once your swing path is better, then you can play from any position in golf that you desire to play from. Think about this. Lee Trevino played from an open position, right? He came from an inside out swing path. Ben Hogan, another great ball striker. He had a drill everybody overlooked. He came to the top of the position, and the only thing he did was what? Pivot the hips. Only thing he did, look what it does. It shallows the swing and brings the shoulders underneath. Like he said, golf is a sidearm swing. Look what happens when you skip a rock. The rear shoulder works under, not around. It works under. So if you wanna play from a neutral or open position, Spend extra time making sure your shoulders are working correctly. It's going to take you to a whole new level. If you want to learn how to get those shoulders working correctly and improve your swing path, contact me and we'll get you tuned up. So we had a little 183 yard force carry over the canal. I took a five iron because I couldn't take a chance with the six iron with a slight miss hit and um, you can't play out of the water. So I took a five iron and the only thing I did was control the distance and the speed with my rib rotation. Remember that, I controlled the speed and the distance with my rib rotation, with my navel control. So I took that five iron and I made it a six and a half iron. Just like on the previous hole back there, I don't carry a five wood, so I made the three wood into a five wood and just put it sky, up in the, sky high up in the, um, the clouds because I wanted to make sure I hit the fairway, okay? So remember those type things. That is what you call distance control and the best ball strikers, like Al Guyberger said, Mr. 59, he's on my golf forum on social media, um, Dr. Blades Golf Workshop. If any of you guys are on Facebook, look, look for Dr. Blades Golf Workshop. I have a wonderful workshop on Facebook, on social media. And Mr. 59, he's one of my subscribers, Al Guyberger we were having a conversation and one of the things that he ab absolutely said and he agreed with is that while he was on tour and everything he's ever noticed, the 
people that play the best golf are the people that control trajectory and distance. Because I told them the only thing I work on when I practice is my trajectory, working shots, left, right, high, low, first story, second story, third worry, and then my distance control. And he said that was spot on. So if it's good enough for Mr. 59, it's good enough for me, baby. Okay, folks, keep grinding. I hope you like this video. I hope you like the tips in this video. But Phil, this one is for you. But many people are going to be able to use these same concepts. Keep grinding.